Now let's look at the geometric transformations concept. This standard is CO1, CO2, CO3, CO4, and CO5. These standards are addressed beautifully in the representing and combining transformations formative assessment lesson. Math Shell is the source, and there's a link on our PowerPoint. We will work on this file task all together, right, in groups like we had done in the past. The goals of this lesson is to formally assess students their understanding of transformations of geometric figures, namely translations, reflections, rotations, right? What are some of the main things about this concept that we need to keep in mind when we teach it? The shape stays the same as you transform. It does not change its form. Here. If it's not dilated. Correct. Thank you so much. So this is a this is a big understanding. This is a big idea behind the standards. Mm -hmm. The idea of congruency, right? Mm -hmm. Could we even use transformations to prove the geometric figures are congruent now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was sort of a new piece for us for teachers mm -hmm. in the past few years. We didn't used to prove that the figures were congruent by simply translating them, reflecting them, or rotating them, right? Mm -hmm. This was something new for us that we had to learn. The format is that students complete the pre-assessment first, right? Then there is a whole class discussion after the teacher looks at the misconceptions, <laughs> looks at the student works, work, and maybe um, comes up with, with a summary of uh, misconceptions that students have and how we can possibly fix them. After that, students work collaboratively on the uh, engaging activity. After that, again, whole class discussion. And guess what? Going back to the pre-assessment. Next time, students go over their initial assessment and try to improve their answers. So what we'll do is we'll probably take about just a few minutes to complete our pre-assessment. All right, we're gonna move on to the matching cards activity. Each of you has a Ziploc bag of cards. What they are these cards are from card set B and card set A. Set A has geometric figures, L shapes, okay? Set B has words. So you have them all cut up and they're placed in your little baggie. What I would like for us to do 
is find relationships between the shapes. If you're looking, let's say, at a set of, you, let's say you choose these two cards and you're looking at them. Say one is pre-image and the other is image. What kind of transformation might have happened to get from here to, to there? If you have discovered, it's just an example, this is not right. If you have discovered that this could be a reflection over the x-axis, you then would put this link between the cards, which would say this pre-image was reflected over the x-axis to get this image. And you would place them like this on the table. And you will go on. Your goal is to find relationships, we're all about relationships, right? Between the shapes. Each car, in each set of two, you will have a pre-image, hopefully, and an image. Let's try to establish as many relationships as possible. Once you complete this task with your group and you feel like you're correct, you've discussed your answers, you've reasoned through your answers, I would like each group to glue the cards to the chart paper. Now, um, usually teachers would ask, or students would probably ask, do they have to be in a line? Or how do, it's all completely up to you. Let, I'll just let you do it however you want to. Over the edge. Edge. This one with this one. Okay, so I'd like to have the Y. Is it this one? Yeah. Oh, no. But it could. Yeah. Go off the, uh, that goes off B. Yeah. That goes off B. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, you. Let's find a good place to stop. We'll have this group present first. So our group worked really hard to create a puzzle with the arrows and the graphs. And um, we were able to do that with some extensions, um, help thanks to our sticky notes. But um, we noticed that um, A to C is a reflection over the y-axis, and C to A is also a reflection over the y-axis. Um, we noticed that A to B is a reflection over the x-axis, and the same for B to A. Um, we noticed that B to E is a rotation um, 180 degrees around the origin, and the same for E to B. C to E is a reflection over the line Y equal X, and the same for E to C. Um, we notice that A to D is a reflection over the line Y equal negative X, and then D to C, and that's also true for D to A, and then D to C is a rotation of nine, 90 degrees clockwise around the origin, but that's not true of C to A, so that's a, an arrow that's pointing a, in one direction. And then B to F is um, a translation, positive two units horizontally and a negative two units vertically. And that's not the true of the reverse, so it's a, it's a singular direction. And the one that got, we had the most conversation about at our table, and we're still deliberating and having conversation, is F to D. Um, so we have indicated that it's a rotation of 90 degrees clock rock clockwise around to zero, um, but mathematically we figured out that um, the rota if we rotated about the origin first and then we translated it 
um, we notice that you have to shift it right to units and up to units. So we had a lot of discussion about about that. And um, so F to D really generated a lot of conversation at our table. Did you all get the same thing we we got for the most part or no? no. Um, it's so we have some fun. different relationships. We have some different. We saw a few additional relationships and she gave us some additional um, arrows. So that was helpful also. Which is uh, the card set C is a great extension differentiation tool. I have a question. How would we teach our kids to rotate about po a point other than origin? And how would we? It's, it's interesting because a lot of times <clears throat> we were going back to what we were comfortable with, which is rotating about the origin yes. and then translating because that was comfortable for us. I had a little quick aha discovery moment. Yes. When we were rotating it around, the, when we shifted it over to 2-0, mm -hmm. we were still rotating it around the origin uh -huh. versus rotating it around, just starting from rotating it around from 2-0. Yes. That's why they so, were a little off when they, yes. off. it wasn't matching that perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you put your push pin through two zero. That's what right. you were doing, right, Suzette? Yeah. 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 Well, when I teach it, that's how I do. I use an overhead this is transparency and a push pin mm -hmm. and, and turn. Yeah. So you literally, it's as if you move the origin onto that point mm -hmm. to zero and yes. literally rotate yes. around that point. Mm -hmm. And patty paper works well mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. with that. Absolutely. What if uh, students may not have patty paper by hand? They can probably use, yes, Jennifer. I found that you can draw a line from the center of rotation to one of the points on the figure. It doesn't have to be all of the points. Correct. And draw another line at a 90 degree angle the same distance. The same, which essentially that's what it is mm -hmm. to rotate 90 degrees. And right? I mean, you can usually get that by counting your. Um, vertical and horizontal distance from the center of rotation to one point uh -huh. and then inverting that and counting counting the other direction yes. and you can see that the two points are at a 90 degree angle and they're the same distance from the center of rotation. You can also use sticky notes if you don't yes. have patty paper. Yes. You can use mm -hmm. sticky notes mm -hmm. and that helps as well. Absolutely. Again, there's an importance um, of what? Hands-on experiences, right? right. right. And experimenting, and exploring these relationships. And another um, good set of questions to um, maybe explore in your classroom would be, how can you replace maybe two transformations with one singular transformation? Mm -hmm. Things like that would be good to, to probably ask your students. Mm -hmm. What if, and what if you want to replace this two with one, what would it be? And this task really led us to have those conversations and ask those questions without the teacher, without you Absolutely. saying, this is the question you should ask. And it really allowed us to explore. We wanted to figure it out. We wanted to know what if we changed the, the um, point of rotation to 2-1 or to a different point, will it still work? And so this task really led us to that. That was really powerful.